the power of public art it is just unbelievable. Even without COVID, people have a kind of yearning for this stuff. With the heightened anxiety, there's a very interesting thing happened. Craft became a big deal. And I'm told it's because they wanted control because they'd lost control. With COVID, you didn't know what the hell was going on. And that just coincided with what I was doing on the beach. My name is Pete Rush and I'm a sculptor. I've always been a painter and artist since I was a kid. Then I spent uh, 20 years as a writer, writing TV commercials mostly, and little forays into painting. Before this, I, uh, I hadn't made any sculptures at all, really. It was beginning of COVID, and one of the places you were allowed to be was on the beach. And I found a little piece of wood. It looked like a, a little pony's tail. So I made a little pony out of it was absolutely amazed by the reaction of passers-by. So many people called out to me and said, that just made my day. Thank you and joy, just over and over and over. And it was just amazing. I'm talking like hundreds of people. And I kept going, of course, because if you're having that effect on people, it's hard to stop doing it, isn't it? This thing just took off, it was amazing. Often there's a sense of humour or an idea behind what I do, but quite often the idea comes from the materials I use. Recently I was up at Kalnara and I found a guy near pole, which are bloody amazing things. And I picked it up and reached up to the sky with this thing and I thought, giraffe. What else could this be but a giraffe? It's like a scene in the movie. It's the little cloud weaver meeting her giraffe for the first time. Another time I found some brown shaggy weed on the beach and a piece of wood that looked just like an elephant's knee and as that became a woolly mammoth. And there's another one where all this bamboo got washed up. Come down the Hawkesbury River from somewhere. So that became an echidna. I once found a whole lot of cuttlefish on the beach, big cuttlefish, and they were perfect for teeth. So I made this big creature and I told him, oh, it's gonna be a walking whale. And I'm trying to tie this cuttlefish into the teeth and thinking, oh, is this gonna work? But it's the same with just about everything. Every time I make something, I'm, it has to be a new challenge for me or, or I'll get bored. Often it's an engineering challenge. When I first started, right, I did the little horse and then I started thinking, how tall can you make these things? And right here in this forest, I did a six or seven metres tall and a 13 metres long. Lantanosaurus, I called it. It was a big dinosaur. I tied it into the trees, so that two of the trees actually became the feet of this thing. I try and make it a new material each time, so I don't know how it's gonna work. That's the thing with what I do, it's all risk. When I fail, I fail publicly but somehow I think they've all worked out, actually, 36 of them. Being on the beach, I get nature on my side. Well, I think that's been my trick, actually, which I've stumbled across. I did this uh, Anzac Day war horse. The idea was a riderless war horse because the Anzac veterans couldn't make it that, that year. And I did this horse and it wasn't, it's very simple. And the next morning I go down to look at it and there, nature has done this amazing sunrise behind it. And then suddenly it was this amazing, amazing looking thing. And, and, and then I learned my lesson to just use nature as much as I can to, to take them to another level. When I want to make something, all I have is a Stanley knife and a handful of this stuff here that's New Zealand flax. It's amazing stuff. You split it up and uh, that is so strong and actually quite waterproof for some time. And that's it. And I just walk down on the beach and what I find, I find and away I go. When my stuff falls down, I'm sort of happy for it to go. I see the faults. When I'm finished, I see what I didn't achieve, what went wrong. The other thing I like about them being ephemeral 
When you go down the beach, it's an expensive experience, right? You look out to see, your imagination kicks in, and um, when someone puts a sculpture on their beach, it's entertaining, you know, and it's a bit of joy. But I always think, give them back their expensive view. I can't just be out in nature, I've got to be making something. Obsessive workaholic, I, the creative urge, right? Kids have got it, you see them at the beach. One kid, he picked up, he went stick, 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 block of wood, weed, boom, horse. That was a horse. And I looked at it and I went, shit, that is, that's Picasso. It's the essence of a horse, right? And I've got that, you know, I'm obviously a child still, and I've got that, the urge to make things and it just will not go away. I, I tell you what, I, I am just a lucky, lucky person. The joy of making is a large part of what I do, just to, to make something that appears in front of you and it's got some life to it. You can't stop doing it really, because when you discover something like this, there's something real thrill in that. <laughs>